All right, perfect. Well, first and foremost, uh, thank you everybody who has joined us. Uh, we're really excited to uh, take an hour of your time today and uh, thank you for investing that hour with us. We hope that uh, you walk away with some valuable insights uh, as well as um, some ideas that you can uh, percolate on and take back to your organizations. Um, uh, for today, uh, your panelists uh, who are going to be navigating the session, I wanted to start off by acknowledging Rebecca, who is our marketing and client relations manager, and honestly, the brains behind uh, putting this together today. So, Rebecca, thank you so much. Please uh, keep Jerome and I on time, and uh, as we get into the questions and answer the Q&A period at the end, uh, you'll be helping us facilitate that. I um, wanted to introduce myself. I'm Kevin Delano. I'm the founder and CEO of IMD. Um, it's been a long road uh, since I started the company 12 years ago and what that digital landscape looks like then versus where we are now. Uh, hard to believe it's only been 10, uh, 12 years uh, and uh, excited to uh, have the opportunity to speak with you today. And I'll pass it over to Jerome. Thanks, Kevin. Jerome Snyderman. Hello, everyone. Uh, so some of you may know me. I've been in the pharmaceutical world for over 20 years now uh, in both sales, sales management, marketing, marketing management roles. And I've been with IMD since the beginning of November, and I'm very excited to be here. I've actually purchased IMD services many times in the past, uh, and so to actually get to work here is, is very exciting for me. So <clears throat> today we're here to chat about reaching the unreachable. We've known for some time that there's a mismatch between how pharma traditionally interacted with HCPs and how those HCPs were no longer seeing the same value in those interactions that they once did. Then COVID came along and accentuated that gap even further. We suspected that digital solutions were part of the answer, but didn't know which ones or how best to use them. As an example, we created branded websites because everybody needs a website, right? Yet the DIN protection required on these sites rendered them unfindable through search engines and they have an exceedingly low ROI. Traditionally, we would drive to an HCP's target's office. We'd wait around to speak to them, maybe buy them some lunch to get a few extra minutes with them, use a detail aid to reinforce our key selling messages. If we wanted to create a digital experience for them, we would plug an iPad and detail them using an e-detail aid instead of a paper-based one. And frankly, this did work for a little while. However, we did notice our access was starting to slip. It was tougher to get in front of doctors and whip out our iPads, Slim Jims, or whatever other tools we had in our bags. Then COVID happened and we were no longer able to surprise them with the sample cupboard and ask them for just a minute of their time. The good old days of armies of reps getting in cars and calling on doctors is disappearing. Now, it's not completely gone yet, but it is disappearing. Why? Well, accelerated digital adoption, right? As the older doctors retire and then younger doctors come in, they've grown up in this digital landscape. There's the stressed and anxious mindset. We know that, uh, you know, doctors um, uh, have been so busy through COVID and the last thing on their mind is spending time with the rep, unfortunately. Uh, shifting attitudes towards sales. They just haven't seen that value that we used to bring or that they used to feel we brought. Healthcare professionals are more resourceful than ever. There's information that we used to bring that they can frankly find on their own quite easily. Uh, Drop-in calls, hallway calls, face-to-face, -face, all have been impacted by COVID. And we're also reducing the number of reps out there. And if you reduce the number of reps, Obviously, that's going to affect the activity. So doctors are making less time for traditional pharma. Reps need to be flexible and detail customers the way customers want, in person or remote. And frankly, we're better off for it. Lower costs, less environmental impact, tighter control over messaging, better, better able to meet customer needs. The challenge is that pharma needs a way to keep their brands present and top of mind with fewer opportunities to do so. So we used to talk about reach, frequency, and quality. Well, reach is down because fewer doctors want to see us. Frequency is down because they don't see the same value in a sales call they once did. 
and the quality of interactions has suffered as we get less time and opportunity to get our messages out. Now, it's not just me saying all this. Just a few weeks back, the president of Pfizer openly stated that we're evolving the way we engage with healthcare professionals in an increasingly digital world, which includes the move to digital and away from sales reps in the field. The go-to-market approach is very different given the way the company and doctors can access information about medicines through the digital route rather than through field forces. So pretty powerful statement. What can we expect for reach and frequency in the new world? The good news is we can actually drive it back up just in a different way than we're used to thinking about it. So for reach, digital tools will allow brands to be present even when reps are not. Frequency, every time an HCP engages with the patient, your brand has the opportunity to be highlighted. Quality, HCPs and patients can engage with your materials, which is a lot more meaningful than simply handing them a brochure. So how do we do this? How do we change the paradigm? So HCPs once again see value in their interactions with us. So pharma has the opportunity to reappear. Post pandemic with solutions physicians want. We need to provide credible information, or reviewed credible information assessments and treatment plan information. We need enablement of easy dissemination of information to the patients. So once a patient sees the doctor, we know they forget a lot of what the doctor told them, but if we can maybe send them an email after summarizing what we spoke to them about, augmented solutions that save time, they're already going digital, so why can't we use digital to help them save time in their practice? Prompt information at their fingertips on their schedule. Uh, the world doesn't work from nine to five anymore, and neither do doctors. Patient information, including assets from pharma, Look, at the end of the day, your resources for your brands are still the best possible resources for the patient, and they know that, and they want that information. It's just how do we get it to them? Uh, patient support. So we know that there are so many patient support programs out there right now. Doctors can't keep track of all of them. So what if there was an easy way to, to get all of that patient support information to them all in one place? Uh, ability to seamlessly transition from in-person to virtual appointments with the same tools. So doctors are in their offices or at home seeing patients. And if they could use the same tool that they're using with the patient in their office as they are in their virtual calls, it makes their lives a lot easier. It's about helping them, right? And reliable information about new therapies, that will always be a need. So again, pharma has the opportunity to reappear post-pandemic with the solutions physicians want. And of course, it's not just HCPs that are demanding digital innovation, as we can see on the left-hand side, but also patients with the majority using online tools for their information, as we can see on the right-hand side. And what, they, what those patients often find is unvetted, incorrect information, in extreme cases, unsafe information. And at the intersection of these two stakeholder groups should be brands. Brands have the ability and responsibility to provide the best possible information to ensure positive health outcomes in the virtual care space. Digital solutions are here to stay. When we look at the traditional sales call and how the role of the rep has evolved, when we look at how physicians are changing how they want to engage with pharma, when we look at how patients and caregiver expectations have changed, to include a higher level of self-education and advocacy. And then you throw in two plus years of the pandemic, what you end up with is not an evolution in healthcare, but a revolution, the digital revolution of healthcare. Any revolution needs the appropriate tools to support it. Fortunately, new tools have been created to help bridge that gap. Brands now have a choice, support the new healthcare paradigm by bringing relevant solutions to stakeholders, or keep doing things the same way they always did and slowly lose relevance with customers. Pass it over to Kevin. Thank you, Jerome. If you could just validate that you are seeing my screen. Yes, we can. Thank you, Rebecca. 
Uh, thanks, Jerome. And I mean, there is no doubt that that digital is here to stay. I mean, we use the internal phrase that the digital train left the station. And over the last 12 years, we've been trying to navigate where that train is going. Um, but for sure, coming out of the pandemic, this digital train is on the fast track. You've seen so many healthcare environments have to adapt, uh, given what's happened in the last two years of our lives. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things that we're really proud about, and, and again, really appreciate everybody's time, is so how have we as a company been able to do that? How have we been able to bridge that gap um, for brands to patients and to healthcare professionals? It's our bread and butter is what we've been doing for 12 years. We are that value added tool that helps bring your brand into that conversation and not just the conversation, but the consultation conversation inside the exam room at the point of, of care. Um, and that's really been our sweet spot. So we're not sitting in the waiting room. We're not, you know, uh, external third party websites. It's when that navigation conversation has happened between a clinician and a patient is where we can bring you to life. Um, we've been able to do this for the last 12 years successfully um, since 2010. And when we launched our business, it's the same time Apple launched the iPad One, um, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, it feels like the iPad has been in our lives for 30 or 40 years. Well, as we all know, it hasn't. It's been here for 12 years. Uh, and like the digital train, we have had to change and innovate all along our journey as well. Some of you on this call, because I recognize many of your names, known us used to know us as the uh the screen people we would uh, we launched our business by putting touch screen computers inside exam rooms and we did that for quite successfully for about five years the problem with that is we couldn't get enough reach uh, and we couldn't get enough growth and many of our brand partners you know when we started we started with 10 doctors in toronto you know said when you get to 100 when you get to a thousand doctors call us when you grow up well that's always the chicken and the egg um, I'm happy to report, you know, 12 years later, we're at 16,000 now um, users across just Canada. And it's been uh, a lot of pivots and innovation on our behalf as well to get us to this digital innovation and keeping up with it. Um, and I'm going to explain some of that to you as well as we go along here. So where do we sit here today? Uh, IMD, for those of you who um, haven't, um, you know, seen us in the last little while, um, we are uh, the largest digital health um, education library in Canada. We have over 110,000 peer-reviewed, trusted, vetted pieces of content. Our biggest value proposition to our users is that on Dr. Google, it's unvetted, it's ungated. Uh, they can use it, our IMD platform with absolute confidence that every piece of information in our system has been vetted. We do cut across 6,000 medical topics and we partner with over 100 of Canada's national leading health organizations and we're very proud of our world-renowned integration that we've got with Mayo Clinic, as well as a recent new partnership with Merck Manuals, both on the professional side and the consumer side, fully integrated into the IMD library. And of course, we've got a great partnership in Quebec with our drug um, database with Vigilance, our RX Vigilance. The other interesting thing that we've been able to do as our part of our digital innovation is the ability for our user groups to be able to upload their own content. So when you go to a specific pharmacy or to a specific doctor or a hospital, et cetera, uh, we ingest their content and their education materials that maybe they're familiar with uh, to create the right patient workflows um, for their experiences. Part of IMD, uh, I think the sweet spot here is that uh, we've got a dual use case audience. Uh, we're as much for the clinician as we are for the patient. Most people know us as the patient education people, but uh, we are also HCP education people. And we are used at the point of care between a clinician and the patient, whether that's in person or virtually. And we're also used by patients or even consumers sitting at home and wanting to access directly on, on their own. Um, we are a uh, device agnostic company. Um, we are a, a web application by design. We are not a native phone app that you have to download, create accounts, et cetera. Um, we don't do that. Um, being a web app allows us to have a full suite of integration capabilities, and I'm about to show you kind of where we've been able to do that. So that's a little bit about us, uh, where we've come from over the last 12 years, and really the audience of who we really target the platform to, it's to HCPs with no surprise. We've been able to statistically prove by third-party audits that we save clinicians time, 26% of their time 
by using a digital education format versus their traditional method, which is paper-based, brochure-based, uh, plastic model-based, or, or shamelessly, sometimes the wax paper on the bed. Um, so we save time. We allow them to have deeper conversations. We extend that conversation from outside of their clinic to the patient at home, and we actually are saving them money as well. Um, so it's a nice uh, scenario for the HCPs. For patients, we're empowering patients. We're giving them the right information at the right time that is trusted information. And we've been able to, again, statistically by third party, be able to show that we are improving their adherence and compliance to treatment plans with this right information. Um, it's also great that we can actually share this information with them post consult. So where do they go to remember? Because we all know they forget about 80% of the things that are discussed inside of an exam room. So it's very important that we give them the right resources post consult. And again, statistically, we've been able to show that we are improving health outcomes by having the best education available to them. And of course, that part of the ecosystem is most of you sitting on this call. We can help your brands. We make your brands available 24 seven. It is digital. Um, we can help you activate patients um, at their first diagnosis and accessing that patient population that you are targeting because we can track in our system you know, what the diagnosis is and what their doctor's been able to look at. Everything in our system is a factoid, it is measured. Um, and so we can tell you how often things are being accessed and if they've been emailed, if they've been opened up, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so from an IMD perspective, we really cut our teeth uh, with some of you. You would know this in our doctor space, and then we expanded into hospital and into pharmacy. Really proud to tell you that we've expanded into a lot of different other parts of the healthcare journey. Uh, and you can see all these different places of where healthcare is delivered. Simplistically said, wherever a clinician and a patient are interacting, that's a place for IMD. That is a place that we take your brands these a lot of these different systems you may have coverage in these or you may not this is a value that we can bring wrap around all of that in these circumstances with virtual care uh, and so again we're playing in a lot of different spaces i'm proud to report we're in over 210 hospitals in canada now we're over 2,000 pharmacies we're integrated in the emr and etc cetera, etc cetera. we've got a lot of exciting things that have happened to our business and as you can imagine over the last two years being in the digital world, uh, the business has really exploded. One of the other really proud moments for us, and it's taken us 12 years to get here, is this busy logo slide. And so we often get asked, how and where do you guys get this 110,000 pieces of vetted content? It is from Canadian partners. That We are the largest in Canada because we have sat down with all of these organizations and we signed publishing agreements with them and we host their content in our content management system. So we are not a web crawler that goes out uh, without permission and grabs uh, hyperlinks and put them into our application that don't do that at all. In fact, our system has to work in nanoseconds because you can imagine a doctor sitting there interacting with a patient. If it doesn't work, they won't come back. And so it's core to our strategy. When we look on a globalized basis, we have added the Mayo Clinic Merck manuals uh, to help us round out our global information of you know, definitions and a few other core aspects to our content. And um, we are proudly Canadian. Our largest footprint is in Canada. We are officially launched in the United States and we've recently launched uh, in Latin America in four countries in Latin America. Our system is French, English, and Spanish. As part of our ecosystem of innovation and digital, is this is a whole brand new slide for us just in the last two years. Um, so as digital has exploded in many different facets of healthcare, we have partnered with that. Uh, and so uh, you probably recognize some of the logos on your screen, but IND is integrated into all of these logos that you see. And I can tell you there's a long list of many others that are soon to come. And so why does this matter? It matters because if you have an interest in getting your brand into these digital conversations, if you want to be a part of the virtual care consult between a doctor and a patient, um, we can help you do that. Uh, and these are the partnering organizations uh, thus far. So with that, I'm going to pause. Um, I know we're going to hold our questions to the end, um, but now what I'd like to do is just walk you through uh, um, a static demo. Uh, we, we chose not to go live just in case the internet decides to do some funny tricks on us. Um, but let me walk you through just at a high level uh, the platform. 
So the first and foremost with the platform um, is there's a lot of different capabilities. Uh, people know us on the education side, and I will walk you through an education module to give you a sense of that. But as you can see down the left-hand side, there are many other uh, aspects to the, to the platform, from hosting e-learning content to doing market research and surveys to registering folks into PSP programs, patient support programs, um, and, and, and more. Uh, and so let me just show you very quickly, you know, if we're talking health associations, you can see if you clicked on that button, if you follow my green circle, um, all of the health associations would populate. Um, we give uh, clinicians quick and easy access through this doorway to the health associations, but also all of their content is also hosted, of course, under the condition topics. Um, so a quick and easy way for clinicians to be able to access the relevant information, tracking logs, things that they need for patients, all within one system. Can you imagine a doctor having to go back and bookmark on their computer a hundred different organizations if you're a family doc to remember to remember where to go and file all those things? This is why it's so important that we consolidate that into one system. Same thing goes for all of you on the industry partners. We do the same approach. All of our uh, product manufacturers, whether it's OTC, OTC, RX, or even nutraceuticals, have a presence on our system. There's a quick and easy directory for clinicians to be able to look up information. But of course, all of their products are also associated to the condition topics within the application. Just a quick example with one of our partners within a gene. And what's really important here to note is uh, content comes in two different formats uh, in terms of target audiences, patient focused and or uh, clinician focused. And our content is typically rich media. So full color graphics, PDF, uh, imagery and video. Um, so just some examples for you. But let me walk you through a typical patient education experience so you can get the flow. Uh, and I'll just show you one or two uh, so you can see that again, we've got over 6,000 different educational topics. So let's say I entered into the system and uh, mine is quite busy, but I wanted to show you a couple of highlights. Uh, for a clinician, there are three simple ways on how to navigate the system. The first one is they could go to our search bar and just start typing, type two diabetes and up it comes. Um, the second way to navigate are all these shortcuts that we put on the home screen. And so um, we as head office can uh, dictate shortcuts for doctors, but most often we allow our clinicians to be able to put their own shortcuts, depending on the program, of course, we, we might control that, but there's, for the most part, it's an open system and we make it so easy for a clinician to be able to click on the topic that they want to get to or their favorite resource, or you can see at the very bottom there, I cut them off to kind of hide some of the brands, uh, their favorite treatment options. The third way to navigate is through the human body. Uh, so in a case, you know, a doctor or a clinician's talking to a patient, they could click on that. Let's say it's neurological. They want to look at uh, information around neurological. And uh, with all of our different uh, medical topics, we've got anatomical images, conditions, and procedures. So very robust information around that. In this case, let's say I was navigating, just talk to a patient about what's happening with the CT scan, why it's done, how do you prepare, what do you expect, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna go back to my other example here, of type two diabetes up in the search bar. So I'm gonna type that in. And when I get to the type two diabetes module, you can see down the left-hand side, what we call the treatment flow of information. Um, this is a very typical one. So you see overview, um, with diagnosis, treatment, and you can follow down the list. Um, those are all drop down menus. And so you can see there's a ton of information in here, all organized under type two diabetes to make it easy for the clinician. And if I went to overview and it expanded that field, you will see you know, symptoms, causes, risk, risk factors, complications. This is all being pulled in real time from the Mayo Clinic. So we use Mayo as the gold standard for definitions uh, and really unbranded uh, or unbiased information. When we go to diagnosis and treatment, it's the same kind of format, pulled in real time from Mayo Clinic, diagnosis, different types of diagnosis, different type of treatment options, alternative medicines, et cetera, et cetera. I could go down that whole list and pull up my imagery. I can use this to be able to show to the patient, here's what's happening. Those are my notes I've drawn on there. Um, and I can pull up resources that are uh, relevant to the conversation. And so in this case, I've done under health and wellness and pulling up a video from the diabetes care community. I can pull up you know, my at-risk checklist and assessment from Diabetes Canada. I can drop down the list and go to my medications.
And one of the key things I want to highlight uh, is we've got every dr uh, drug available in Canada through RX Visualon. Um, we have a product monograph, um, and we also have the unbranded patient leaflet. And where it comes in with working with industry is, of course, as brand companies make amazing educational materials, and we also want to have those included into this architecture that you're seeing. Um, and so that's where we would call it a featured RX, and all of your branded information gets featured into that repository. Um, as an example, one of our partners in diabetes with Dexcom. Um, one of the other cool things uh, you probably subtly may have seen is there's a little pink box on your top right hand corner. And so every time I touch something on the system, it actually is adding it to the email summary. And I'm going to show you what happens at the end of the consult. But in this case, this Dexcom piece was just added uh, to the email summary. Again, whether it's a video or a PDF or an image, it all gets added to the, uh, to the email basket. And as I wrap up my consult uh, with this patient on type 2 diabetes, all of the things I touched are added to the email summary. And as a clinician, I touch that pink circle in the top right hand corner. It's got a subtle little timer on there to say how long I've been talking to the patient. Um, and it's got a recap of all of the things I touched. And if I wanted to delete something, I could simply hit the X. I've got an area where I can type a note to the patient. Um, by default, our system is a one way email system. However, we do have the capability for two-way. Um, we haven't met a customer yet in Canada who wants to do that, but we have the capability. And we also have the ability to add an email address for the patient uh, in our integrations with EMRs and pharmacy dispensaries. Um, those uh, are pre-populated, but if it was a standalone system like I'm showing you here, uh, we would enter the patient's email address. And there's an ability for them to carbon copy somebody like a loved one or maybe a specialist or maybe their family doc, depending on where they're at. And here's what happens. Uh, the patient leaves uh, the clinic, whether that's virtual or in person, they get an email from the clinic. All of our customers and um, you know, HCPs, it's all branded by the clinic, um, whether it's pharmacy, hospital, it's all their logos. Uh, it comes from the clinician, in this case, Dr. Smith, uh, from the location, and all of the information is a hyperlink uh, for the patient uh, once they've left the uh, consult. When they click on the, any one of those links, there is a five second hold uh, that says, just be patient, we're organizing your content. This is a great ad board uh, for our brand partners if they wish to take advantage of that to uh, communicate with the patient once they've left the consult. And once the content is rendered a few seconds later, it looks like they're back inside the same environment that they were with their doctor and all of the information that was sent to them is available following that same kind of algorithm down the left hand side and there's a great brand spot here too um, that we can target uh, so we obviously know um, uh, the gender of Of the patient uh, you can see that from when they you know started the session we know the age uh, we actually know the and so I know I've gone quick and I'm just keeping an eye on our time. And um, I've just shown you really one aspect of IMD, which is education. And um, we don't have time for today, uh, but again, want to percolate some ideas with you. If you were thinking about any market research in the digital space, advertising, I've just shown you a couple of capabilities, hosting of e-learning. We want to talk about patient support programs and the digital ecosystem. Um, we also build custom educational modules to follow the right patient workflow. Um, we have therapy focused solutions. I'm going to show you a picture of one of those. And we've recently launched a whole health equity play within our application. I think one of the key things to, to note um, is we have over 1800 versions of IND in Canada alone. And so I've just shown you a very vanilla or demo based version of that. Um, and we can change the colors, put the logos on there, customize it, turn it vertical. Um, you can see on the top right hand corner where it says health hub. In our 200 hospitals where we are in the bedside uh, entertainment systems in hospitals, um, that's IMD. Uh, we've taken away the human body navigation. We've made it an alpha search. Very easy for hospitals and patients sitting in bed to be able to navigate the system. They have different, obviously, medical knowledge of the human body than clinicians do. You can see in the bottom right how we would work and do work with virtual care companies where we split screen, where you've got clinician on one side and the educational content on the other side. Patient support uh, directory. So Jerome referenced this earlier uh, with the prevalence of PSPs uh, in our country. Um, we hear it every single day from doctors and patient communities that they don't know about access. They don't know about these programs. 
and we're trying to solve that problem. We already work with probably about a dozen or so PSPs, um, but now we're launching our national directory. It's up and running, and we're trying to get as many PSP uh, companies and brands there so our clinicians and patients have got access to be able to see what's available and so on and so forth. So that's a new feature that we just recently launched. We also have in the Canadian landscape therapy focused solutions. So all I'm showcasing to you today is one and it's called our oncology solution. We are specifically in 30 oncology centers in hospitals across Canada where used by the oncologists, by the nurses or the DANs um, in very exciting uh, centers. You can see these logos. Um, and it's a very customized solution, hospital site by hospital site. So you're seeing just one in the middle there with the iPad with North York. When they open up the IMD system on the iPad, all they see is the chemotherapy regimen on the home screen. They do have access to the other 6,000 topics within IMD, but this is how um, they, uh, is their preference within the oncology space. And it's all video-based learning and our teams have worked very aggressively uh, with each hospital site that we have across the country. We've got therapy focused uh, channels happening in hematology um, and other disciplines that are just about to launch. Uh, so again, if you um, have uh, thoughts or um, opportunities in that area, we'd be delighted. Health equity is a big thing. It is coming to the main stage, the social determinants of health, indigenous health. We are um, taking a leadership stance in this in Canada. We're working with a tremendous amount of organizations who are taking the same approach to this to be able to help Canadians to get to the right content when and where they need it, uh, no matter what background they come from. So again, a key interest for us, um, just to show you some examples of that. So it's always interesting in a webinar because I feel like I'm just talking at you. Uh, we do have time uh, for questions. Uh, and I see, uh, I know Rebecca has been pinging me. There are a few coming through. Um, so I just wanted to kind of wrap up to this and just jump into the next step with that, which is things have changed. If you are, took away any insights from what Jerome has told you, some of these, uh, I think we've assumed things have changed, but there's many that have not. And, um, you know, companies are taking stances. We're seeing it in the United States, first and foremost. It is coming to Canada. Let's not be naive to that. Restructuring, right-sizing, and changing methodologies is coming. Um, and so the question really is, you know, how are you going to adapt to that? You know, is your organizations and your brands ready to reappear in this new environment um, to not only to your clinician, but to your patient populations? You know, what innovation are you going to do in digital to be able to capitalize on that? You know, the days of having a gated brand website um, or a box of brochures in an exam room um, or your own even dedicated app, those days are behind us. Um, and um, you know these trends, and we're watching it globally. They're behind us. And Canada, you know, I think we we are leaders in this space. Um, let's not be followers. And again, I hope that we've shared with you a few meaningful insights that you can take away from today's discussion on that. But before we give you the gift of time, we're not quite there yet. Um, please don't hang up on us. Um, stay with us because we. I think we've got some. There's a lot of questions popping in, which we can see. So if you have a question please put it into the chat like many of you are. Uh, we look forward to uh, addressing some of those. Um, Jerome and I will tackle those. Post this, uh, we, uh, Jerome is going to send you an email. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be included with a link. A PDF of this presentation will also be there so you can circulate, uh, socialize it within your organization if you wish to, we hope you do. Um, we'll also ask you for a quick two minutes of your feedback as to whether or not you've got meaningful um, uh, insights out of this discussion. Uh, to be honest, this is the first one we've ever done. Uh, we typically kind of take a grassroots approach to talking to our potential partners um, in across all different disciplines, and uh, we thought we would try this as a new venue. So we'd really love to hear if you think it was meaningful for you or not. So with that, um, I'm going to um, take my camera and get Rebecca back on there and uh, help us uh, navigate the Q&A because I don't see all of the questions, and I think, Rebecca, you are getting them. Of course, yeah, I can see them all. And thank you for sending your questions. Um, thank you to Kevin and Jerome for the presentation. And yeah, let's just jump into the Q&A right now. Um, I can see that some questions have already come through, but if you would like to ask a question on your screen, you'll see a chat box with a question mark inside of it. So if you click on that, it will open a box where you can enter your questions. Um, and if we don't have time to get to your question, we will follow up with you with your answers. Okay, so the first question that I can see here is, is the content gated? 
Um, Jerome or Kevin, I'll just pass that over to you. Sure, I'll, I'll jump in. I feel like I'm in the hot seat now. Um, yeah, absolutely. Everything in our system is gated. Um, so let me define gated. Um, it happens when a clinician registers for an account. Um, again, all of the accounts with them are free. Um, we validate that it is a clinician. And so uh, in Canada, that's doctors, nurses, and pharmacists. When they create an account with us, um, they get full access. Uh, if it's people outside of that HCP, HCP space, uh, we do um, make sure that we're rendering the right content to the right audience, but it is gated. It is, we also have the ability to gate it provincially, and we have the ability to obviously gate it um, nationally. Um, the other, other side of gating uh, means are we compliant? So the answers are 100%. We work very closely with PAB. We work very closely with all of the privacy laws, and uh, we are absolutely gated on Canadian soil for our servers, uh, different than our American servers, uh, so on and so forth. So um, I hope I answered your question. Perfect. Thank you. Um, there's another question here that says, how much does this cost for a doctor? Um, Jerome? Jerome, take it. I, I, I've been talking. You take it. <laughs> so, so Kevin, I think you actually already answered that. So the, the answer is yes, it's completely free for all healthcare professionals, no cost at all. That was an easy one. Perfect. Um, and then another question I see coming through the chat box is, does all content need to be PAB approved? I think you just briefly answered that, Kevin, but... Jerome. Yeah, so we, do, we work within the spirit of PAB. Uh, most of the materials on our site are in fact PAB approved, uh, but it's not a requirement. Perfect. Okay, um, and just a reminder to please send your questions in the chat box, but I do see a lot coming through, so we'll try to get to as much as we can. But another one is, can this experience be customized? Sure, well, let me, or Jerome, I'll, you know, I'll jump in just because I referenced that a little bit on my slides. Uh, absolutely, it can be customized. Yeah. We actually customize it uh, on a national, provincial, down to the organization, down to the actual clinic basis. So, you know, our experience that we have in our NMR clinics is different than in our uh, life lab clinic versus a doctor versus a specialist. Um, and so we customize, and that's why we've got over 1,800 different experiences of IMD, but we can actually customize right down to the content flow. So if uh, working with one of our partners, um, if you know, we wanna talk about a particular disease state and you, know, you follow this, 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 and this, we work with you. We validate all that information, of course, because the system is used by everybody, uh, but we can customize it right down to the individual user and the individual piece of content. Perfect. Um, and that question I saw that just came through was, do you still have physical screens inside the doctor's <laughs> office? Let, let me take that one. The answer is no. Um, you know, I, uh, I, <laughs> I lost most of my hair during those terminal days, which we call our terminals for our, our hardware computer. Um, um, it was a great business to launch at that time, but uh, those of you who are around and know what I'm referring to, um, very expensive. We were going around giving doctors $1,000 uh, touchscreen computers. They, were, they had a drawer full of iPads, thanks to most of our pharma partners, um, but we needed to create our own space and hang it on the digital, on the wall in the exam room. So we did that for five years. We couldn't do it anymore. We've turned over ownership of all those devices uh, to the doctors. So if you happen to see one in a clinic, that has not been updated in six years. We've asked the doctors to turn them off, unplug them, recycle them. We don't want them back. Uh, so if you have had that experience, please give us a shout back because we're very different than uh, what your experience might have been before. Very true. Okay, perfect. And the next question is, what has changed since you were acquired by CloudMD? Uh, well, let me jump on that one. So some of you may know, uh, we were privately held for the last uh, 10 years and about a year and a half ago, uh, took advantage of the opportunities in the pandemic. Quite honestly, I was taking the company public um, and last minute had some uh, amazing opportunities for um, exponential growth, and it made sense at the time to sell it. So we sold the business to CloudMD, a publicly traded company, um, and since that time, it has been amazing. Um, they acquired 16 companies during the pandemic. We have integrated into 14 of those. The reach that we have now through EMRs, through first responders, you know, being part of Sun Life uh, benefit programs, employer health, um, EAPs, these are areas that we as uh, IMD had never tackled before. 
uh, and now we're involved with. And um, we just won a huge program in the U.S. with Liberty Mutual. Um, but again, you know, in Canada, being part of the Sun Life Benefit Program is pretty exciting. The amount of lives that now have access to the IMD education and therefore your information, um, has, it's been exponential. Um, I don't even know what our count is, uh, but it is way massive versus what we could have done on our own. So it's been a smooth transition and uh, I would say just creating much more opportunity for all of us on this call uh, versus us just being IMD on our own. Great. There's lots of really good questions coming in, so we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, another one that I can see is how many sales reps use this or can reps use this? I'll take that one. So, so reps absolutely do use the system. Uh, there's a couple of different ways they, they use it. So we can actually create an instance specifically for you, for your therapeutic area, for your brands, and the reps can actually use that to detail. Another way that reps are using the system is they'll actually use that national platform, show doctors what information is on there, uh, where their information is on the platform, so where they can find the branded information re relevant to them. Uh, and then, of course, as we've said a couple of times, it is free for physicians so they can sign up for an account. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Jerome. Um, another question is about the oncology program. So my product is an oncology-based hospital product. Does IMD have opportunities for brands there? Um, and I'll leave that to you, Kevin and Jerome. Yes, yes. We would love to have your brands. I mean, one of the, one of the interesting things about our platform in totality is um, we've never been exclusive with any product and we never intend to do that. Um, so we're, we, we don't. We have built the system from day one for the clinician first um, and how they work and to get them to use it. Um, and of course, we want to bring in uh, branded information um, in the right times in the right uh, areas. So the answer is yes. Um, you know, even in the oncology space, um, we've got a lot of great partners, but we do not have them all. We are missing many molecules that we would like to have. Um, in that ecosystem to be able to educate patients on the, on the drugs that they're on um, in that environment. So yes, 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 please. Perfect. Okay, um, another question. There's lots of really good ones coming through, so thank you to our audience. Um, if there is a health association that is relevant for my brand that you're currently not working with, are you open to working with new ones? And so I'll let either of you we do actually. So we actually work with over 100 organizations already, uh, but there's many more organizations and we have a team dedicated specifically to that. Uh, so if there's an organization that you want us to reach out to, if you want to introduce us to, we're, we're thrilled to do that and work with you to get them on board. Great. Thank you, Jerome. And another question that just came through is how do you ensure consumers are not signing up? So we do a credentials check. So anyone who, any healthcare professional that does sign up, we do fully vet them to make sure they actually uh, are a healthcare professional. Yeah, and to add to that, um, we do work in the consumer space. So uh, we uh, serve up the right information to the right audience at the right time. You know, if you were on the Now Magazine or the Georgia Strait in Vancouver, um, again, we work in a lot of different consumer areas. Uh, so for sure, we're uh, sensitive to what RX information is available at the right time. Um, but we uh, love working with the OTCs and nutraceuticals as well to be able to broadcast them holistically in a big, in a big open market. So it really depends on our partner and depends on uh, the use case. Exactly. Okay, perfect. I see some more questions coming in as well. Um, are going, there certain Rebecca, special... I'll, hey, well, I'll stay on as long as our audience will stay on. And we uh, booked an hour, but as people exactly. drop off, you let me know. But let's just keep going. Yeah, we have a few more left to answer. Um, are there certain specialists you see really leveraging this platform more than others? And I will hand that over to you, Jerome or Kevin. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, the answer is yes. Uh, so let me just go through some of our bigger markets. Our bigger markets for sure, and not in priority order. So don't, you know, oncology is a huge market for us. Hematology, part of that oncology space. Uh, we've been quite strong in rheumatology, dermatology, GI, um, family practice for sure, uh, pharmacy now, um, the other markets uh, really, we've got a strong market in nursing. Um, so a lot of nurses uh, in different therapeutic areas are really engaged with the application. And we've seen a, a huge, it shouldn't be a big surprise, but we've seen a big trend 
for uh, doctors, uh, really immobilizing their nursing support teams in different areas to take on that challenge of patient engagement and patient education. And so um, that's a new area for us in the last few years, uh, but that is also a tremendous user group for us. So I don't know if I've answered that question specifically. Um, I'll, I'll give you the flip answer to this. Three years ago, we did nothing in oncology and a brand company called us and said, you know, how many oncologists do you have? And my answer is zero. Well, now uh, I can tell you in partnering with that brand company, uh, we have got the lion's share of the big markets. We've got more to go. Um, and we're now seeing, um, you know, uh, tremendous opportunities with provincial wide uh, systems in the oncology space. So that was in partnership with a product manufacturer who um, helped us do that. Their reps had the relationships in that industry. Uh, they opened the doors. We worked together collaboratively. Uh, they got to introduce it into that segment, um, but it was non-exclusive. And so they also welcomed, you know, bring in the other brands that, and let's have in a great uh, user experience for the clinicians and the patients. So if uh, whoever asked that question, if it's a space that we're not dominant in, we would still welcome the opportunity to sit with you and maybe this is part of your more strategic aspect of how do I engage my sales organization? How do I tie marketing together into that? And how do we create something special in that market segment that currently doesn't exist? Perfect, thank you, Kevin. And I do see another question here about the oncology program. Um, in terms of Canadian hospital usage slide, so that slide that you presented, they have access to the IMD site, but how often do they actually use it, whether for themselves or with patients? Yeah, I don't have, that's a great question. I don't have that those facts directly in front of me, so I don't wanna misspeak. Um, I can tell you, uh, like in every digital experience, you've got super users, you've got good users, you've got average users, and you've got some users you need to kick in the butt. So I would say the same is true with most of our users across the country. In oncology, where it is probably the number one area uh, followed by hospital bedsides across Canada in terms of utilization, followed by actually by labs. So like life labs, it's amazing um, how much utilization gets happening there. So back to oncology, I can't tell you the splits, but uh, you know we can follow up. I don't know, Rebecca, if you can see who asked that question, but we can follow up on that. And um, what I suggest is if you've got a specific interest in oncology, let's book a separate session and let's get into the details and we'll bring in the oncology experts from our team uh, with all the data that you would uh, ask to see and uh, we'd be delighted to share that. Perfect, thank you, Kevin. I think my, did my screen just freeze by any chance? No, oh, you're good. Okay. I'm okay. Okay, thank you. For on my end, it just froze for a second. You, you did, but a we got you back. Oh, no worries. Once I'm back, perfect. Um, and I do see a lot of questions here about the metrics and usage, which I'm sure we can share after with these people. Um, but another question is, let me well, take a look. Let me just jump. What let me jump in on that, Rebecca. Just. Sure. We're getting a delay now, Rebecca. Um, that's okay. Um, let me just try to address that. So within our system, uh, we measure everything. So um, you know, we know what was used by who, uh, when, um, and um, what content they was they were using and viewing, and what content was emailed out, and if that was opened up, even if it was forwarded onto a different IP address. We've got a lot. We use Google Analytics on the back end, so we've got a big secure data engine helping us with the analytics. Um, we always get sensitive about very specific doctor data because the user agreement that we have when they sign up for an account is that it, it uh, we don't sell their specific information for obvious reasons. So we can provide aggregate data, um, and uh, we're always at the mercy of how the clinician signs up. If they just give us their name and their doctor number and their province, uh, sometimes that's all we get. So we can at least validate that. They off, they may not tell us, oh, I'm a GI and I'm in, you know, this, the other details behind what really, what we would like. We've got a pretty full application form, but they only need to fill in a, a little bit just to get the account going. And we keep reminding them to give us more information on their profile. We don't always get it. So again, um, if you've got specific questions on metrics, um, you know, just give us a shout. We're going to put Jerome's email up if you didn't already see it. Uh, so you can email us. We'd be delighted to follow up with you, but there's a lot of reporting. That's very true. Um, yeah, just more questions about usage and um, metrics. But one is, what is the percent of usage or page views on mo mobile versus tablet versus desktop? 
desktop. And with that, we will follow up with you for sure to send you those metrics. But that seems to be it for the questions. So that was awesome. great. Mm. Awesome. Well, if there's no further questions, um, thank you so much. Really appreciate everybody investing your time. Sorry, Rebecca, do we have a delay? No, we just had one more question that did okay, come all right, in. Go. All right, go. Sorry, if you have time to answer this. But, um, so we have case studies that have shown an impact on an adherence. What is the major, sorry, this is worded a little bit weird. It's, okay, I'm not sure if, I will get back to you on that one, but the well, wording let, is a little funny. So. Let me take a stab. Um, and I don't know if it's a question about IMD or, to, uh, or, or a statement about our uh, viewer uh, with case studies. We have case studies on IMD. They're done by third parties. A lot of our hospitals actually do case studies on us to validate that this digital innovation is going to work for their patient populations. And so uh, we can certainly share, uh, but one of our recent ones was done by North York General and another one recently by um, Grand River Hospital. And both of them wanted to understand the impact of digital education versus their traditional or their current methods of education. They also wanted to track in a patient populations, um, you know, uh, study over a period of time, the impact that had to adherence and the impact that actually had to their health outcomes. And so this was all done by um, the hospital. These are some of the factoids I would have shown uh, in our slides. Uh, but again, if you've got an interest in understanding the full aspect of that, we'd be delighted to share it um, uh, privately. Uh, we're not in a position uh, without um, uh, permission from the hospitals to do a public um, dissemination of that. But we can certainly, if you email us, I can send it to you. Perfect. I don't know if I answered that question or not. I took a, I took a guess at it. So. <laughs> I th yeah, I think you did that perfectly. I could not really read it that well, but that's okay. Um, and yeah, that's it for the questions I can see in the chat box right now. So perfect. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> well, listen, um, uh, with no further ado, Rebecca, thank you very much for organizing all of this. Um, we really appreciate uh, everyone taking the time to learn more about what's changed in the digital ecosystem, um, how the IMD product, I hope we've given you some ideas you can take back to your teams to think about what should we be doing. Uh, don't be strangers with us. You've got questions about, could you do this? Could you do that? You know, are you strong over in this area? What if we did this? Just give us a call. We'd love to explore this. I mean, what we do now is so different than what we did a couple of years ago. Um, and we've got a lot of great partnerships with a lot of logos that you saw on those slides that I think we can really help you uh, get your message more amplified than maybe what you're doing today. So um, thank you for that. Um, I Let me see, I'm just gonna put that screen back up. Um, Rebecca, can you tell me if I'm on the right screen? Uh, Jerome's email? Yes. Okay, perfect. So if you didn't capture Jerome's email, he would be the uh, central point of communication for us. Uh, flip him an email. We'd be delighted to uh, get back to you. And you will also obviously get an email from Jerome with a recap of uh, the documents we promised for you today. So with that, thank you so much, everybody, and uh, stay well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye.